Hey Storm fans, welcome to um, episode one of the 23-24 season Let's Go Storm podcast. Um, as usual, I'm here with um, Rishi and Mike and our special guest, the legend Michael Darlow, um, is on as well. He's just got to go finish the washing up, then he'll, um, then he'll be back. <laughs> Thanks for coming on, Michael. <laughs> no worries at all, happy to be here. How was your off off season? Did you um did you get some downtime? Uh, it's it's wedding season at the moment, so uh, a lot a lot of um a lot of my friends and a lot of my, my partner's friends were um yeah getting married. So um yeah, went to five. really great summer. Obviously busy recruiting, a lot of uh, sliding into DMs, which takes its time. Um, but um. No, it was all worth it. It was all worth it. I'm pleased with the team that's been that's been put together. And but before yeah, we say, um, sorry, Rich, come. Sorry, Rob. It must have been quite a lot of work because there's a lot of a uh, lot of changes between the. Uh, yeah, there the was. Um, yeah, there was a lot. It was obviously there's been a lot of change, um, but change change can be good. Um, and I think after last last year. Me and Tom, I've said to Tom, every time I say last year, I've got to put five pound into a pot because I, I do, I've got to stop talking about it. Um, <laughs> so I'm probably going to put a lot of five pounds in the pot tonight. Um, but yeah, after last year, we lost a lot of like core core figures that operate within the club normally. Um, and it, it was making sure that we recruited a group of people that followed the Storm's values of, of being good human beings. Um, yes, if you can put the ball in the hoop and you can play defence, that is important, but are you a good person first and foremost? Um, and I think we've done that once again. Um, everyone is, everyone is decent. Everyone is is there for something bigger than themselves once again, um, and hopefully that leads to to another successful season. It'd be very silly. Throughout the summer, we we were very big on um, we cannot have the expectations of not losing because that's just ridiculous. Um, we we have to have the expectations of being competitive in all four competitions. Um, and I'll repeat what I said last year about the kick King. I still hear people saying it and it blows my mind, but I still hear people around the league going, oh, it's a great pre-season event. Well, he, that's just bonkers. Like it's a national national title played probably the biggest crowd of the year uh, at Surrey Sports Park. Like you should, you should, you should be putting all into it. Uh, and we've done that again, really gone for it in the kick King. Great win against, uh, MK, and now we're playing Bradford away, which was a, a lovely draw to have in a hat. <laughs> <laughs> on, a, on, a, on a Sunday as well. <laughs> on a Sunday, yeah. Bradford away on a Sunday. How beautiful is that? Um, but yeah, no, it's been it's been a busy summer. Um, but yeah, pleased with pleased with how it's ended up. Drew was um, Drew was obviously a sad loss. Um, he 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 put his confidence in in me being his assistant for what, five years ago now. And uh, I really enjoyed working with him. Um, and there was actually a small chance that I was going to be doing it. Um, but then when Mark's name came to the table, it was an absolute no brainer to, to get him on board with a man with such experience on and off the court in both sides, of the men's and women's game. Um, it was crucial that we continued having a really well um, run club with a really good coach who's very experienced. So yeah, we're in safe hands once again, which is all good. <clears throat> so um, before we get into more about the recruitment and, and you working with Mark, um, and I don't mean to make you put more five pounds in the pot, but um, <laughs> what, what did you make of last season? I know when, um, when we sat down last year, you said the first few training sessions, you were like, wow, this is a good group of group of guys I'm working with. Um, and the expectations were, like you said, we'd go full front or all four, four um, trophies. Um, obviously not expecting to walk away with all four trophies, but you know, what, what's your take on last season and how, you know, how good it was. And did you see it kind of playing out like that as the season went on? Um. We were always quite big on one game at a time. I know it's such a cliche in sport, but you hear rumblings of people going, "Oh, well, if we beat them, then we'll beat we'll beat them, and then we're on for being undefeated." And 
And Drew, fair play to him, he was always the one going, we've got Werther next, or we've got Manchester next, or, or... And it was always one game at a time, all the scouts prior never looked ahead. Um, and it was, a, yeah, it was, an, it was an awesome time to be involved with Hemel Storm, and it, it's really taken the hard work of lots of different people to build the club on and off the court to be able to compete on all fronts. Um, and everything just just struck gold. I talked about it last summer a little bit with recruitment. We're we're not professional like we're not professional like like men's football. Um, where you not interested in him, we'll get him in instead. There's so many factors that have to work. There's only a few accommodation spots we can provide. There's we have to consider people local to the area. Um, so losing the likes of Teo and Nick to very fair and fair reasons is a big loss because they're local talent. Um, but I I I thought it was a fantastic year and uh, yeah, crying at the at the playoff final kind of uh, showed how much it meant to be honest. And uh, not just the playoff final, right? I think we yeah, I think we saw hopefully you cry Mark at least four times, mate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, I, yeah, league title. I cried because the Newcastle trip home. Um, but um, yeah, the, just the feeling on the playoff final, just just to know we we'd done it, and um, it was yeah, it just it's just a thank. It was it was I cried because it was more, more to thank everyone behind us and thank the 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 families that put a lot of time into running the club, like the the Humphreys and the and the Taylors and the Walkers and the and the Cuts. Like it's all one massive family, and I know. Bless them. They they spend their holidays talking about Hemelstorm. Um and it was nice to sort of at the end, it was something that Teo and I talked about at the awards evening, where I said, Well, we both were talking about if we if we win on Sunday, I think we should get Tony and John to lift it. Um, because it they're they're a um what's the word? They're an example, not the word, they're they're sort of the face of everyone that that works behind to make it possible, all the volunteers. So it was it was really touching to give those guys that sort of thank you as well, because um, I was getting bored of Teo lifting trophies. Um, so, <laughs> so yeah, and uh, yeah, so yeah, fantastic year. Loved every second, and I'm um, I look back with very fond memories. And it was actually something I talked about in a team talk once before the game. Um, we just we came into the game a little bit lethargic, and Sam, funnily enough put something on his Instagram saying, I um, can't remember the exact words, but it was something like, we'll look back, we'll look back in time as as these as the good old days. Um, and I thought it was a really, really strong point. And I, I kept bringing that up to, to tell guys that let's not let's under sort of appreciate what we're all experienced group of guys. Guys, let's not take that for granted and slip a loss to Solon at home in the in the first round of the playoffs, um, which we nearly did. So the speech didn't work that well, but um, <laughs> the guys got the uh, the guys got the the general gist. Of it. Um, but yeah, fantastic year and uh, yeah, loved it. But all eyes going going forward now. I mean, obviously, before we do start looking forward, trophies aside, is there a standout moment from last year that's not any of the four trophies? <laughs> um, standout. Charles's block. I, I, I still think that is an incredible play. And I know we were up regardless, but for me, that was the pivotal... Not pivotal, maybe not the right word. That was a really big moment because... To go to our biggest competitors, Derby as well, don't get me wrong, Derby as well, but go to our biggest competitors at their place. And all the talk all summer have been up. Look how good Werven's team are. Look how good they're... To go to their place and beat them in a tough matchup, I think really for this could be good this year. Um, and that block kind of went, yeah, do you know what? This is Hemel Storm's year. Um, and what I loved most about it as well, and I have a lot of respect for Ronald, Bla Ronald Blaine. I think he's a good basketball player, but he talks a lot of rubbish throughout throughout the game. And he was talking, he was talking to Charles a fair bit. And Charles is not the type of human that will really talk back. And he just let his actions speak louder than words. 
um, and just smacked it against the backboard and <laughs> the game's over, which was which was awesome. Um, but yeah, that that's definitely up there. Newcastle driving back was 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 a wonderful experience. Um, yeah, they're they're probably they're probably the two the two the two best moments because winning of the cup and winning winning the the league trophy whatever you want to call it are, are great. But for me, the league demonstrates that you were the best team um, on a consistent basis, and I think that that was a real like. Yes, no one can argue that we just won a couple of trophies. We actually yeah. were the best, um, yeah, throughout the whole year. Um, so yeah, I like that. I think that Charles one comes up a lot. I think everyone we've asked that has had that in the top three. So, and then when we yeah. spoke to Charles about it, he was quite relaxed. I said, well, "Did you have any emotions?" He goes, "No," because I knew how he was going to play the ball, so I knew I was going to block it from the minute he picked it up. And I was like, All right, "Fair enough." <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, that was an incredible moment. Yeah, it was. It was. It was awesome. I think. Yeah, I think I remember watching it back and seeing. I think Rishi, you were in the crowd, weren't you? Like this or something, or going like this? I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. Um, but was, uh... Just seeing people. It's seeing. It's it's seeing people that are massively invested in the club from an emotional standpoint and a and a loyalty standpoint. Seeing them have joy and happiness is is awesome um and there's lots of moments that created that which made last year so special um so yeah. probably a good question guys actually probably not something we haven't talked about as fans in what was kind of our what was our standout moment i know we've talked about it throughout podcasts with some of the players Charles's block and stuff but now you look back at the season um fuzzy what do, what would you say was your standout I think for a, from a personal point of view, the coach journey home from Newcastle, um, I know that was Theo's favourite moment of the season, so that's definitely up there for me. <laughs> um, but I think other than that, the Solent game in the playoffs, I think when Hakeem just took control of the last quarter, with just became immense. And I think, yeah, that was they're my two favourites outside of the Charles Block. Yeah, the Hakeem wagging his finger and the yeah Newcastle journey home. How about you, Rish? Um, it's a really good question, and uh, there are loads on the court. Um, but I think that um, actually it was quite emotional. Was uh, Drew's speech at the awards dinner when he was talking about the village and how the team has to, you know, everything comes together? I felt I've kind of felt it at that point. You know, the the energy from the team and the whole organisation behind it and how everything goes. I think that kind of crystallised that for me. Um, so. It's a bit of an off the court one, but that one I thought that was quite special. Yeah, Rob, was... anything from you? Um, mine's going to be an obvious one for me. So the Kit King final was um, the same day as Amy's birthday. So um, she said that was her best birthday ever. Um, so that yeah, that's it. It, it has to be that um, when you see your, one of your kids that chuffed on their birthday, even even at her age, is yeah, just magical moment. Um, Fozzy, I know you you watch the BBL a bit more than um, Rish and I. Um, mm -hmm. I, was, I watched, I've watched some of Aaron's games this year so far. What have you been making of what Aaron and Taylor of um, how they've started in their in their new teams? I think, yeah, for me, it's been an interesting start. I think. We expected them both to hit the ground running. If I'm honest, I probably didn't expect Taylor to get as much game time as he has already so far this season. But that, yeah, that might just be me under value in Plymouth. But yeah, I think Aaron was always going to do what he's done. Um, stepping up was was big. I mean, from a club's perspective, um, Michael, how was that for having two players from the same team going up to BBL from inside the club? Yeah, it was. Um... <clears throat> I think we're all we're all well aware of where um Hemel Storm sort of stands in the basketball hierarchy. Um yes, we 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 hit the apex of uh of division one basketball, but there's a league above us which operates um operates professionally. And when two people dominate as 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 much as they do, it's gonna be very difficult to to keep hold of them. Obviously we put we put a, a challenge to it, but 
at the end of the day, they want to test themselves at a higher level and and we we wish them all the best. There's no hard feelings. Um, we all still check in with them both. Um, and it's weird. I, I when I'm watching them both play, I'm 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 only really watching watching the two of them and how they're getting on. Um, and and they're doing really well, which is really pleasing. And thinking, speaking quite selfishly about the club, even though that's not how we operate, but it's it's a factor that people have raised is that you then become a potential destination of more people like Aaron and Taylor. Yeah. Um, and you can put your trust in us that we will give you a platform to demonstrate um, how good you are with the, with the potential of, of, of securing uh, a professional contract in the league above or elsewhere. If, if, if Aaron keeps playing and the way he's playing, um, yeah, he, he, he could be going on to, to bigger and better things. And I, I say that, bit differently to Taylor because Taylor's a little bit older. So Taylor's a bit, Aaron's a little bit younger in his career. Um, Taylor's Taylor's obviously a little bit low, older, but they're both certainly showing how key they can be um, within within their two sides. And it's also nice to see, just talking about Aaron, Aaron due to the makeup of our team, um, Aaron played as a bit more of a big um, whereas in the BBL, because size is, is is a lot bigger, he you seeing him on the ball um, a little bit more. Even though we did adjust our tactics at times to make sure that he he was on the ball, but more often than not, he at times he's playing the um, the Sam Newman role in the BBL uh, or the Seth Swarov role, where he's he's a facilitator, um, and that's why it's great seeing him get Player of the Month and and all and averaging close to a triple double. Um, and and people forget he has a British passport, which is absolute gold, which is absolute gold because he doesn't go into the quota um, of six. So, yeah, really pleased for them both, and uh, yeah, wish them all the best. Definitely, yeah, I think it's yeah, Aaron's going to do yeah big things potentially. I think someone was talking about it. Obviously, no disrespect to Cheshire, obviously, because they are a, you know well run organisation, but. Could we see him in a Euro League in a couple of years or or higher potentially with his ability? That's of course if he wants it, but he's definitely got the the talent to do it and age on his side as well. And 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 he's got Lions. Like Lions are huge. Um yes. played really well against them. Um, it is, yeah. let's see. I yeah, let's see. He's playing them again Friday, isn't he? If he's fit. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't think he's gonna be fit, but um yeah, the Cheshire are playing London. So, yeah. Yeah, we've got tickets, actually. We're going down to watch that game. So, uh, first time at the Copper Box. See it, what is that's all it is brilliant. I've, I've, I went to the, well, you, as you guys know, and I apologise for that, I went to the, the, the opening European night and it, it is it is incredible what they're going on down there. But um, Aaron will still be there. He, he will still travel with the team, I believe. You yeah. might want to check him. Um, I'm sure he won't mind you guys saying hello. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we've stayed in touch um, a little bit from time to time. Him and Taylor, you know, just when we see him a bit on a uh, on TV or whatever, just uh, you know, wish him well for a game or what have you. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Love that. Yeah. How did you find that Lions game? Um, off topic of Storm Rocks, because I know you were courtside as well with with Sam. What was the what was that like being being that close to a game like that? Yeah, I, I hope to go with someone a bit more interested next time. Um, but um, yeah, watch, watch it. It's it's so nice. It was so nice to just sit and watch a basketball game and not be worrying about pre-game, during the game, post-game, scout, uh, reflections. Like it was just, I'm going to sit here with some with an overpriced hot chocolate and just enjoy enjoy watching some European basketball. Um, yeah, it, it was it was pretty awesome, and it, it's very motivating actually because you see you see the guys on the court who are coaching, and and never before really have we had uh, a basketball team in this country operate at that level. So it's like okay, well, look at the coaching stuff. Right, what's on their resumes? What's on their CVs? Like, how can I get to that one day? Um, so yeah, it was really like this is this is awesome. Um, just fingers crossed, it's sustainable and and 
and the wealth can be spread across across the league. So there's more opportunities um, for good players and, and good coaches. Yeah, like that. Talking talking about the Lions tends to then lead us into talking about um, Mark Clark, I guess. So um, Rish Fozzie, when when we heard about it, we were obviously looking at his background, quite excited that Storm had gone out and got someone of that pedigree. Um, Rish, what do you, what do you make of it? Well, I think yeah, it's I mean it's a it's an amazing signing for Storm, and I think the way that. Storm is now going into uh, with a uh, you know the women's team as well as the men's team. It seems like a, a great appointment. Obviously, you know he's got lots of knowledge to share as well. So I guess you know for the future of Storm and and for yourself, Mike, it's uh, a you know a, a really exciting appointment as well. Um, obviously, it looks like um, this on top of a new coach. There's lots of new players to kind of bed into into the team. So um, it, I'm interested to know what what's different from from. How, how it was last season and seasons before? Um, each coach that, well, I've only really worked with two coaches, but from speaking to other coaches, coaches more often than not are authentic. And they, 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 no matter what rule book and theories that are created, they are authentic. Um, and Drew and, and Mark are, are very different. Um, Drew, Drew is very um and and difference is not wrong. I'm not I'm not suggesting yeah, yeah, yeah. that. It's just different. Drew was very um by the minute, by the second. And I used to turn up, I used to turn up by like on a on a weekend. Well, normally we'd have a D3 game, but um if not, I'd turn up and be like, all right, I've got to make sure that we are on time. Players are in the change room at this time, announcements, players are warmed up by this time. And he was and very strict on that. Mark's a little bit different. Um, Mark is a bit more sort of chilled about it. Um, and the reason I think that is no fault to Drew, but Mark's just got years and years of experience. Um, and as soon as those boys come in, let's say the tips at seven, we normally talk 45 minutes before for 10, 15 minutes, and then they warm up for half an hour. As soon as that quarter past six arrives, he, he like clicks straight into, all right, let's let's get on this um and it so just adapting to that because i'm normally like running not running around but i'm like all right everything in place that i'll just right, as long as we're there at quarter past six and, and mark will be happy um and and the same thing with authenticity as an assistant to an extent um like in during covid there was lots of lots of podcasts and lots of talks and i i was listening to each one and i was thinking all right, how to be a coach, how to be a head coach, um, and an assistant coach, you, you you have to be adaptive to what the coach wants, um, and you have to be adaptive to what, she, what a coach needs, um, but also true to yourself. So I'm still hopping up and down, talking rubbish in Mark's ear, as I did to Drew, <laughs> did to Drew last year, um, and, and they both... Give me the same signal. Sit down, Mark. No. <laughs> they, both the same, they both give me the same gesture. Um, but the both of them said the same thing. Don't stop your suggestions. Um, and I, I, I won't stop doing them. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's it's different. Like Mark, I used to um, scout the other teams last year with Drew. And then on a Thursday practice at the university, Drew would deliver the scout. Whereas this year, I would do the scout and I deliver the scout. Um so yeah, it's it, it it's all it's all quite different. Um, and Mark joined very late, so Mark didn't really have much of a of a say on who who we recruited because we we had to, we had to get on it as soon as as I've said before, as soon as the buzzer goes off the playoff final, off season it's not really an off season. You have got to start recruiting. Um, and, and speaking to guys so because we didn't get marked till late he didn't really have much um have much say in in who we did sign um but he he he's got the wealth of knowledge and experience to 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 adapt his style to to suit to suit those guys not adapt to to not be authentic that's not what i mean but sort of adapt the way he, he employ certain tactics in order to make the best out of, of what we have and that's not being disrespectful to who we have that's not what i'm saying in in that a certain style of play wouldn't suit a certain system of of team um yeah. so yeah he, he has the experience to be like all right this is my team all right i'll make it work 
Whereas a younger coach, like when I start, first started coaching, I was like, well, I need this, this and this because I do this. Whereas what I started to learn is, yes, still be yourself, but you've got to be adaptive with the way you coach because you can't necessarily exactly pick who you're going to have. Yeah. Um, like this year at times, I don't know if you've, I don't know if you've got noticed, but there's been a sit- some situations where we've gone uh, Sam, Seth, um, Jack, Veron, and Tez. There's not a, there's no big guys on the floor. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have noticed that. And that's something that we we because we switch a lot defensively. Last year we 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 um we kept we tried to keep Hakeem on their big guy, and everyone else kind of switched. It's, it's a bit more complex than that, but. Um, Whereas this year we switch everything and 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 we we try and front. So if a big ends up on Seth, Seth is fighting to go in front of them. Whereas last year we were we were staying behind. Um, so yeah, very different. But it, it it's it's for me personally, it's awesome because it's another opportunity to learn uh, and another opportunity to learn. Because I've only only ever known Drew from a first hand experience. Second hand from watching people from afar and seeing clinics and stuff like that, but a real feel of it. it it's yeah, another opportunity to see how one of the country's best has has how he does it. Um, and he coached my old man too, so it's quite nice to hear some of the stories <laughs> that they that they had together. So um, yeah, we're in as a, I'm repeating myself, but we we are in good hands and it's it, it's exciting. It, it I had mixed feelings. It was sad, like obviously it was sad about drew uh, he yeah he just wanted to have a little break but then those feelings were also sort of matched with all right excitement um because we've got another another season to to go ahead into yeah that um that like what you said to... there as well like, I... go on, sorry, sorry. <laughs> i think we've got a little delay there mike um actually we asked the same question to to seth about kind of getting yourself mentally prepared after a season like like last season sorry for the extra fiver but um the um <laughs> you know getting your mind into a new season and going again you know is is hard I guess and I guess that's maybe weighs in on decisions about whether you, you carry on or you have a break or what have you but um yeah it must be you know it's one of those things you've got to think about is getting yourself back motivated oh, to, uh, to start from zero right every yeah. season yeah, literally start from hit the reset button. Um yeah. and 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 losing Teo, Nick, Romario, Aaron, Taylor, Charles. That's that's mm. a big core that needed replacing. Um and it, it's very hard in division one as well because it's a, as as we talked, it's a semi-professional league and finding certain people that are happy to travel around the country sometimes and not play much is really difficult. And that's something that the club is something I talked about many years ago in that the club needs to form a link with a university because the guys on our team like Cavell, Matt and, and um, Ade who aren't playing at, at, at much at the moment, they, they, we just practiced today as a uni. They're one of the main guys. Wednesday, when we play UEL at four o'clock, um, they were playing major minutes. And that's how it works. So if you look at some teams, some teams haven't had success in Division One because by the end of, well, sometimes by Christmas, they've only got seven or eight players because spots nine, 10, 11, and 12, they're like, well, I don't want to travel around the country and not play. Um, so don't get me wrong, it's still hard to manage. It's hard. Yeah. As I'm getting older, I'm, I'm realising that it's, it's, it's impossible to keep everyone happy. But there's other ways you can manage expectations and manage what you are going to get out of this season. Because um, Cavell's growth from from when I first had him at the City of London Academy, he was a, he was a boy, but now he's a, he's a young man because uh, he got to compete with with all those guys I've listed on a on a regular basis and learn from them. Yeah. Uh, and now he dominate he dominates Division Three and and. Such words he dominates on Wednesday. Um, so, so yeah, it's it's very as I, I called it a jigsaw last year. It's really difficult to build a team, ticking everything you need on and off the court with the coaching and the community, with the accommodation restrictions that we have. Not restrictions because we still have a really great offer offer with that, but people have got to be able to tran- trans um, travel in. Um, there's multiple factors that have to be considered and. And I, I'm. I think we we 
it was it was tough after last year, but I think we found a motivated group that that wants to be successful. Um, so yeah, and and so far, obviously Saturday didn't go as as planned, but so far so good in terms of still still being in a semi final of a competition, and the league isn't decided on the opening day, is it? So um, yeah, still lots of lots of time to see how well this group will do, but. Based on how they've gelled so far, and and the talent that we have, I think I think we're going to be okay. I think there is some good talent in the team. I think we saw, obviously, as you mentioned, I think um, Atiba joined quite late. Um, he missed a couple of games at the start, but I think we got good glimpse of Matt in the USA Select game, and he's got some explosive talent, and he likes to he likes his flashy dunks and stuff. So I think as the season goes on, I'm looking forward to seeing. Seeing that a bit, and obviously we know what Caval could do from last year, so no disrespect to him. But I think, yeah, I like, I like the look of Matt and the young squad we've got this year. Hmm. And and Bernard as well. Bernard's um, Bernard has badly he did not badly, but he he did his knee right in, in pre season, so he hasn't really touched. He touched the floor against USA Select, then did his knee, hmm. and so he's he's just come back um, to pretty much full not full fitness but close enough um because we have bernard greg cavell ade and matt all on on the uni team as well um right. and we can sort of we can sort of offer it's like a joint offer um in that okay you get to study so some of them are studying masters some of them are doing undergraduate degrees so you get to play for the university um there is there's scholarships involved, so they receive a scholarship, and then you also plays for Hemel as well. And then they're getting they're getting their competitive on court experience um in in the Bucks and D3. And then on a Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, they're around the Hemel Storm environment and and take your opportunities when it comes. Um so yeah, and I and and what's nice about Ade and Matt and Cavell, Greg's is a little bit different because Greg's from Sheffield. But the rest of them are um, local, so it, it helps with the local sort of pool that we need to constantly think about. Um, so yeah. So you mentioned earlier about like when we were looking at um, either re-signing people or, or bringing in new players um, about how they have to be good people and fit into the into the storm culture. Um, but what else were kind of the priorities or the strategy for kind of um, which players we recruited in the summer? Um, so we it, we kind of went down the approach of of who out of the starters, who out of the starting group can we keep? Um, and so the starters were all right. Who who wants to come back? Um, so Hakeem, Seth, and Sam were like, yep, yeah, like we're in. And then once Aaron and Taylor were like, we're off to the BBL, then um we have to start thinking again. Yeah. Um and Braden, <laughs> oh my God, I don't know if I've I don't know if any of you have heard this story, but in the summer you message agents and you say to agents, all right, we're looking for this. Uh, this is our budget. This is what we can offer. Can you find us some players? Agent comes back with 20 odd guys. All of them are the next Michael Jordan, apparently. <laughs> and you go, you go through each one, and you're like, yeah, he's all right, yeah. And then you, then you, then you speak to people who are like, okay, I need a character reference. It takes time. It takes so much time because you're like, and like, and they've got to be, it's got to be the right fit. So we were looking for someone because Seth was was one of the imports um, spots. So we were looking for a stretch four, someone who could um, shoot the ball and was big, and. Uh, in Britain, there's not many big, so you have to use that that import spot as a as a big. And yes, we're going for all these names, and then out of nowhere, um, a girl called Georgia Fisher, who plays netball, used to play netball with Georgia, messaged me on Instagram, going, "My partner um, is coming over to England." I was like, "Okay, yeah, well, tell me, but yeah, he's a, he's a basketball player, he's played for New Zealand." I'm like, "God." Play for New Zealand, um, sent me his highlights. I was like, this guy's good. And, and we'll house him. I was like, wow, this is, <laughs> this is awesome. Like all, the, <laughs> all these things we have to go through. And I just get 
I was watching, I don't know, something rubbish on telly. And I just get an Instagram message come through saying, yeah, yeah, would you like? And that was it. So arranged some calls with him just to sort of, as I said, the expectations is so important, making sure they're managed and they understand what they're signing up for. And Braden was awesome over the phone. Really awesome. Um, we had a common ground on on um, netball girlfriends, which was... <laughs> um, but yeah, we just he got on and then, and that was it. And what that meant was one of the... Because Taylor and Aaron were in the accommodation spots. So Seth was going to... Seth lives with John, which meant we still had two accommodation spots, which meant we could go out beyond the Hertfordshire London pool and be like, all right, who's available? Um, and Veron, Veron Eze was one we were really keen on um, because he's, he's young, um, very good, like in the community coach. Um, so we went after Veron. He's, he's a good defender um, and he's one that we hopefully can build, build with as we go forward into the future. And then, yeah, throughout the summer, we were like, well, how can we get, how can we get a common this last accommodation spot Phil? because it's it's gold and that our, our our um opportunities are so broad now um and we were speaking to various various different people and uh tez was one of the people we were speaking to but then tez got offered uh something in germany um and then that fell through and tez was like yeah we'll, we'll come to you guys and uh that's where we were and and again this is how the university comes help because Ade, Matt, Cavell um, and Greg all live on the university campus um, and they they basically just jump in a car with me and I, I drive them around everywhere um, and it's my music no one else's um, so yeah it's uh, it's it's very interesting the way you you build a team um, it is very much like a an, a war uh, board you know when you're like moving pieces around and stuff like yeah. that um, but it's very nice when that when the twelfth guy signs their contract, you're like, and now the season begins. <laughs> but it's a uh, it's it's a uh, it's fun. It is enjoyable. What's your um, a... what's your Uber rating then? If you're driving those guys around, have they rated yeah. you on Uber? <laughs> <laughs> Five star. I hope so. Anyway, but um, yeah, depends on the music. Uh, not... To be fair, that could drop. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm normally normally talk sport. I know that's not music, but yeah, it's talk sport or magic normally, one or the other. So, uh, bit of late night magic is quite nice on the drive home. Poor <laughs> boys. It must have been quite nice this summer, though, by the sound of it, having a player slide into your DMs. A bit of role reversal. I know it was awesome. It was fantastic. I'm like, oh, this is this is how you feel. It's quite nice. Um, so yeah, it was it was a real nice feeling to get someone of the caliber of Braden to uh, sort of make your life a little easier. If I'm being honest, because it it was all just ticking boxes off rather than trying to sort out the whole problem. It was how okay, how do we just sort out the finer details? So yeah, and uh, I think his impact has been has been shown shown already, which is for sure for sure great stuff. Looks a great player, yeah. Needs to sort out his tash and needs to not look as New Zealander every time he turns up. But apart <laughs> from that, he's uh he's doing all right. Cap, some random top and some shorts. That's that's normally what you can guess he's wearing. Um but and then Seth, I think, has followed him with his tash as well. Um yeah. I'm just jealous because I can't grow one. But uh, <laughs> those guys, yeah. That needs Yeah, you. I'm enjoying the tash game. It's good. They they yeah. they've gone well. <laughs> And I did. Look, I look up. I looked up on Saturday. I think Seth had just come off, and the first thing he did after he sat down after being on the court for about six, seven minutes, he just did this before he got a drink and everything. I was like, "All right, fair enough." <laughs> did, did you have to grind as hard as you did for Hakeem last summer for any other players? <laughs> did it? Did Hakeem make you work hard again, or uh, was that no. a bit easier this year? No, he didn't actually. A couple of other guys did that that we didn't actually sign in the end, um, but. Um, no, Hakeem was Hakeem was um reasonably straightforward. Um because obviously he's an he's another one who's who's a very, very good division one player. Um and and he's a he's a he's a good person like to have around. Um but he he's also at a different stage of his life where 
he's just had a child so kind of wants to settle down a little bit um so the 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 opportunities elsewhere aren't as attractive because um that doesn't give him the stability of being around his wife and his, and his child um so yeah hakeem hakeem was yeah reasonably straightforward which is good yeah, I had the fear about Hakeem because obviously I was talking to him after the playoff final and he was saying about his wife coming over with a kid and I was, I was a bit scared given where he lives we were going to lose into a bit more of a local team around the Thames Valley area so it was quite nice to see we signed him. <laughs> well, yeah, like that's his that's his close club to his heart. Like he's, they, They're the ones who gave him the first opportunity really. Um, but yeah, he, he, loved, he loved last year and wanted to give it another crack. And he's he's started the season very well as well. Missed the double double win you know, pretty much every game. Just um... yeah, there was one there was one game where he's I don't know if it, it was London Elite I think. And we subbed him on subbed him off after a minute because he was playing like an idiot. Um, <laughs> but yeah, then he went straight back on and he was back to his old ways. Um, he's extra. He is quite extraordinary. You you won't really realize his impact. Like you do obviously know his impact, but what I'm saying is you don't realise his statistical impact until you see the stat sheet at the end of a yeah. quarter and at half time or at the end of the game. But Hakeem, Hakeem was oh he had twenty and ten. Hakeem was oh he had twenty five and seventeen. Like it's just he he he's in, he's incredible and uh, yeah he I think he's he's realised last year and he he deserved I don't think this is talked about enough. But he deserves a lot of credit for sacrificing his usual, like major contributions. Like if you look at his stats previously, he was it was twenty, it was almost twenty and twenty. Okay, last year he still got seventeen and I think twelve or something. But he knew in order for us to be successful that he needed to do the things that Aaron and Taylor weren't very good at and let them be the stars. Um, and and when we needed Hakeem. When when I think at Derby away, we needed a keem because Taylor was injured. Uh, Worthing away when Taylor got um, into foul trouble, mm -hmm. he was always there when we needed him to step up. Um, and he yeah he he's fantastic to have around again. So so happy days. Yeah, he's a slick operator, isn't he? And he just a uh, real team player. Yeah, yeah, he 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 really is, and I think we're starting to see more of a Braden and Hakeem connection, which is which is nice to see. Um, yeah. And it's perfect, like them three, that Braden, Hakeem, with with Bernard, like subbing in for each one, and then Ade as he as he keeps developing. Um, that's a nice four right there. That's a nice four that beat each other up at practice, which is which is also good. <laughs> Gonna say after seeing Ade a couple of times, I wouldn't want to be getting anywhere near him. He's a unit. Yeah, he's a so, big. Yeah, have you ever, have you ever spoke to him though? A couple of brief times. Absolute lovely lad. Um, and he and he calls me sir, so that can stay. That doesn't need to change. <laughs> <laughs> you can call you can call me that for as long as you wish. No, he, yeah. He, sometimes goes, you're right, sir. I'm like, stop calling me sir. You don't need to call me that. Um, but yeah, then again. Great guy, and uh, he's he's doing a part time masters at the university, which is uh, which is great. So we we will definitely have him at the university next year. So yeah. How how important was it getting Sam and Seth back as well? Because obviously, to get three of the starting five from that successful team back, um, it seems like a big win in the end. Given that all the all, all the all the sort of stuff coming out of Storm was out. Aaron's leaving, Taylor's leaving, and you're like, oh God, who's next? You know. <laughs> yeah, so that was um that was obviously something we I wouldn't say we we planned for in the summer, but we were like, all right, let's get because we knew there was bad news, let's get the bad news done. And then the day by day announcements can build the excitement back up. Um but yeah, that we've always had ever since I first started. We've all I've always known Hemel to have Hemel people in the core. So there's always been people that understand the standards, the principles, the family feeling within Hemel. And we're doing it for not you, we're not doing it for you, we're doing it for all the volunteers and the fans that I've, I've talked about previously. Do we have we got 
a certain number of those people back in order to make sure that that culture remains. So Sam, Hakeem and Seth, yes, they're very good basketball players, but they tick that box off. Jack Burnell ticks that box off. Tom Frederick, who was a player, now is on the coaching staff, ticks that box off. Cavell, been around a year, he ticks that box off. Um, and 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 I think the guys, well, I know the guys that are, are new to the team are slowly realising how great it is to be involved in 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 this club. Um, so yeah, even though they they were um, technically very gifted, gave us great output on the court, off the court, they they help with the standards that which which make the club successful. Um, so yeah. That's a uh, it's an interesting one because I, I know I'm not quite sure how you recruit for that. You know that that character thing. It's uh, you mentioned sort of ref references and things like that, but how do you kind of identify that? Um, so yeah, references from people we trust because you can get a reference from anyone nowadays. But references from people we trust and phone calls, like just or meetings face to face. Yeah, yeah. Can we, can we meet face to face? Can we have so Veron long phone call with Greg met face to face. Matt Ade met face to face. Tez was mainly over the phone, not not too much detail. Um, and Braden on the phone, so you can quite quickly pick up. Like I remember once um, I spoke to someone on the phone. Hi, you're right, yeah, okay. Um, so what do you want to get out of next season? Like if if you came to Storm. Oh, I just want to use it for somewhere to get my stats up, really, and then move on. Oh, okay, well, bye. <laughs> um, like, <laughs> I'm not going to waste my time with with someone like that. And the the basketball community is very close knit. Everyone knows everyone, and everyone knows what someone is. So when you get guys from other teams, I won't mention their names, who are like, and don't get me wrong, some are decent human beings. It just didn't work out for other reasons. But some are like. Oh, tell tell him like they'll they'll say tell him all that we're I'm interested, and they expect us to sort of be like oh we hear you're interested like like who do you think you are do you know, do you know what I mean like like you're not bigger than us and you already given us what well, I mean by us is Hamill you're not bigger than us so you already given that sort of sort of vibe I'm not we're not interested in that um so so yeah there was quite a few guys that sold themselves completely incorrectly and they're just not interested I'm just not interested in people like that it's hard as well because it's hard the other thing as well is like people are products of their environments to an extent so if the environment's pretty poor it's going to be difficult for them to be a sh be like the shining beacon from that but I still think you can maintain a certain level of good reputation despite the circumstances that you're in Yeah, um, and there's some that I think follow the ship and are part of a bad product whereas you could be the difference maker and 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 join somewhere which does things properly and i'm not being arrogant saying that about Hemel. we are very lucky with all the wonderful people that help make it work but we do things properly um and that's something that we'll always stick by and anyone that's going to slightly affect the standards the culture the the family orientation goodbye not even interested so no, I think this season as well, you probably would have saw a, a slightly different dimension. Not only people saying, tell him I'm interested. There probably would have been a mentality of some players out there that we've won four trophies. So there's probably an endless pot of money and they'll probably try and earn more money here than they have done at another club, which again, is probably something that went against you a little bit for times. Yeah, people were, again, I won't go into details. It's not right for me to do that. But people were, were like pricing themselves at amounts. I'm just like, what are you doing? Um like yeah, you, I know we had a very successful season, and and benefits came off the back of that. But you still need to understand the the climate that we operate in. Um. So yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Well, you pieced it together well, so we'll see how the season goes with uh, the twelve you did manage to get over the line. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Otherwise, uh, yeah, could be a uh, by by Mike Darlow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um Rich, what have you made of the of the start of the season? Obviously we got to the 
the semi-final of the Kit King um, through some tough games um, and obviously started the league, unfortunately, with a, a slight defeat at Loughborough. How have you found what you've been watching? Uh, yeah, re- really enjoyable, actually. Um, I know we, we we lost the other night, but I actually, and there wasn't a lot in that. Oh. We win that game. I don't think it was a, a huge... Um, you know, we didn't get battered or anything like that. And I think I think the team have been playing well. And I, I think it's interesting looking at the different looks that we're getting at the team. There's been a lot more like fast substitutions and, you know, um, yeah. And it's interesting to, just to see how the team is shaping differently to, to last year. But so far, I think the team are performing really well. And it's great to see how they're starting to gel on the court. How about you, Fuzzy? Um, yeah, I think I've enjoyed the kicking run was was nice having closer games. It was <laughs> up and down. I mean, I think Milton Keynes, I think I stood up more than I sat down. Um, so it's to have that from my perspective at the start of the season was brilliant because, yeah, we, we did so well last year. There's another five before you, Mike. But we we were winning games quite comfortably, whereas this season it's been so close. It's getting back to that excitement factor all the time and that Milton Keynes and Loughborough. I think there was a one point, I think on Saturday, we went to 68 all or 78 all or something, and it was just so exciting. It was so close to the edge. Um, yeah, obviously it didn't go our way, but it's still, yeah, it's been a, an exciting start to the season from a watching perspective anyway. And that, and I think the league, the league as a whole, has got a lot more competitive. Mm. Um, I, um, I can't remember exactly, sorry, when you guys sort of really started following Hemel, but number of years ago it was it, out of nowhere Solent just went this is our budget this is what our plan and everyone was here and then over the years it slowly got to right to to last well for us last year was right we need to put a team together that can compete with with uh Solent Kestrels so we we went off we went after Kim Aaron Taylor all these guys, and we got um we got a squad which we felt, and then they obviously changed the way they operate. But standards are right, and standards are rising. And I know from people who have told me that Derby, Nottingham, Bradford, um, MK, even though even though they're in Division Two, they they will get promoted this year. Um, all are putting squads together that are trying to now breach Hemel Storm standards, um, and it's only a good thing. It's only a good thing for the league. I. I couldn't tell you the top four. I, I I don't think I could tell you the exact top four by the end of the season. Last year, I think I, I had a good go at knowing who would be in the top four. But Derby, um, Bradford, Reading, um, all really competitive teams. Um, and I think it will be an interesting season for everyone. Like Nottingham beat Derby on the weekend. I think that's extraordinary. That's extraordinary. Absolutely. Jody yeah. Campbell had a ridiculous game. Fair play to him. But a team of Malcolm Smith, Corey Johnson, Sam Maston. Incredible. Incredible result. So, yeah, it definitely, yeah. there'll definitely be a lot more close games, not just in our games, but in the uh, in the wider wider league as well. Essex beating Worthing was something you wouldn't have seen last year as well, wasn't it? Essex, I didn't even, yeah, I didn't even mention Essex. Essex got Luke Brazimbu, Poorman, Olerarin, uh Ekwe, two Americans. Like, they're, it's good. It's only good. It's only yeah. good. It might not be for our trophy cabinet necessarily, but it's, it's good for the future of British basketball. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, Birmingham looked good. I think the whole weekend there were some interesting results, don't they? And Birmingham, yeah. I forgot <laughs> All in Jackman's at Birmingham, Sam Tolowaitis yeah. at Birmingham, Martin Gale, experienced players. Like, uh, yeah, it's 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 good. It's it's yeah. it's exciting. I, th- I, I think you've basically, I think you've basically just sat on the fence there, Michael, and said any team in the league <laughs> might have a good season. <laughs> Did I do that last year as well? You asked me, and I just listed every team. Didn't I? Um, <laughs> I think I think Derby Derby will still be up there. Um, I think Reading will be up there, and I think, um, yeah, Birmingham or Bradford, Birmingham or Bradford. Let's see, 
Let's see between them. And then you know who I'm going to put as the other one. <laughs> How, so, sorry, Mike. No, I was just going to say, just with you talk with listing off the teams that could be competitive and some of the signings we've had come into the league, like Corey Johnson, Basumbi's come back down. With there being a team missing, has that had a bit of a different dynamic to how we set the season up? Because obviously we're a, a, one less team to play against this year, isn't there? Two fixtures less. Has that had any impact or has it not something that's been thought about? Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's not something that is, has come across in our mind. Um, obviously, there's one less or well, two less fixtures we have to, to have to think about. Um but we're still piecing a squad that's trying to be competitive, regardless of who we're who we're coming up against. Um, so yeah, because there's going to be that time this year where we don't have a game. Like the season kicked off on Saturday, and Reading didn't play. Yeah. So Reading season doesn't start till this weekend. So there's always going to be that that one game behind for certain people, isn't there? So that could have a different dynamic in playing catch up. Yeah, and it's um, there's so many. I know I talk about variables with recruitment. There's variables with hosting a game as well. Because yeah. no one really owns, apart from the university teams like Essex and Loughborough, no one really owns their venues. Um, mm -hmm. For example, the Bradford game, uh, the Kick King semi-final game was supposed to be on the 29th of October. It's now on the 5th, uh, 5th of November. Um, and that's just things that you you can't, we try our best when the fixtures come out to be like, all right, that's a that's a run of four away games. Like, can we swap with a team to have maybe three away games and one home game? Like there was there was a schedule of something like Bradford, Thames Valley, Nottingham away, away, away. We're like, all right, can we switch one? And we managed to do that. So it breaks it up a little bit. Um so yeah, there is consideration on sort of the schedule, but a lot of it is out of people's control. Yeah. And we didn't and we didn't talk there Michael about what you've made of the start of the season obviously um we all talked about what we've seen how how have you, you know how have you felt obviously kicking semi-final um slight defeat on Saturday how do you think it's going yeah I think it's um considering the amount of change that was um what was it we kept five kept five guys seven new guys got two new coaches in Mark and Jake's joined us um yeah, it's been a gelling process, but one where I think we're now we're now starting to see sort of the fruits of our labour to an extent, because London Elite and and um, Thames Valley we we didn't we didn't beat comfortably. Um, MK was always going to be tough. They're they're a very good organisation. I'm not being disrespectful to Elite and Thames Valley. They're still good, but MK are a different beast. So it was nice to sort of. Um, get through those games. Essex are another tough team, to be fair, but it was nice to get through those games where we haven't completely gelled yet, but then get to a position where, all right, we've gone through like the, the gelling process. Now, how successful can we be? Um, so, yeah, I think I think we, we're we still finding our feet. I want So um, after the um, technical hitch, um, <laughs> we've managed to get Michael back. Um, so we've we've had a new section for this year, and you'll have seen on um, the Let's Go Storm Instagram account um, where we've been asking fans, players, people in the league, volunteers, or whatever for um, for some questions that um, our guests won't have pre-seen. So some of them um, may be funny. Some of them. Michael might not want to answer, but <laughs> um, Fozzy, you've done lots of legwork on that. So do you want to um, start with the questions? Yeah, there was a, there was a few repetitive questions we had and we had a few um, funnier questions and some quite serious ones. So I'll start with a lighthearted, light hearted one. Um, we received from a young lad called Aaron Rye. Don't know where we've seen him from before, um, but he's asked if we can ask you how you coped being so good looking. Oh no way! That that can't be true. That question, um, fake tan. No, um, no. I, I, I don't know. To, I don't know how to answer that. Uh, just, I'll give a big shout out to my mum and dad for uh, for uh, maybe won't talk about maybe won't talk about how it happened. <laughs> we can give a shout out to 
to the Darlo to the Darlo gene. Maybe we can do that. Thank you, Aaron. This is going to be like the right. between us now, isn't it? It's like yeah, yeah. <laughs> not very. Yeah, I think Aaron friendly. must have a little man crush he's taken to Cheshire with him. I suppose on the flip side, if you mention the Darlo gene, though, we did also have a question from a certain photographer that follows Storm around, Toby. Um, <laughs> he's asked if you could let us know why your head is so abnormally large. <laughs> Well, that's, uh, yeah, that's something that's out of my control. Um, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, previously I gave a shout out to my parents. I'm going to have a go at them on this occasion. Because, uh, uh, well, apparently when I was born, the again, won't go into detail, but the head the head came out and my dad thought that was the whole thing, um, which shows that, <laughs> shows that I've had a very big head from day one. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that, Toby. I do appreciate it. He, yeah, he seems to catch it at pretty decent angles. If he if it does it from the side, it looks massive. So try and keep the front on shots, and we're we're all good. <laughs> and I think why why we're still on the um on the sort of funny ones, um, someone asked who is his favourite point guard who plays for Storm that comes from Ipswich and where's number four. <laughs> but we that was kind of anonymous. We're not sure who asked it. Um. <laughs> Right, I'm going to make sure Veron plays number four because he's from Ipswich. So we'll go, we'll go with Veron. <laughs> oh, Veron. that's backfired dramatically on Sam. Yeah. That has, isn't it? Veron, you've changed number for the next game. Go forward. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, moving into a couple of the more serious ones we had, or not serious, not like dramatic, but. Um, there was a question asking about your injury at a young age. Um, how did you cope with that mentally? And did that give you a motivation to stay in the game and become a coach? Um, so, yeah, I it's quite, it's quite a shame how it happened. Um, we, we were due to go on a, a group holiday when I was, when I was young and the night before we were going to go away and fly Um I was like, do I want six of my mates, six, seven of my mates around my mum for an evening or shall I go and organise a scrimmage <laughs> and uh, make sure that no no, uh, no banter towards me is brought up? So uh, we went into scrimmage and I actually did it that night. I, I landed on someone's ankle. Um, and then during the summer, I, I tried to recover. Um, and then the first day of pre-season, I was, I was running along and uh, or running is a bit of a generous statement. Um, but I was I was moving along, and um, I heard the crack in my left foot, which was the which was supposedly the strong one. So I, I jumped off my left foot, landed on my right foot, which was the one I originally did, and I heard all the cracks in that one as well. So I was yeah laying on the floor, like Jack was like you look like a dead bug, you know, and bite bugs on his back. I was like thank you, Jack, I really appreciate that. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, straight to straight to hospital and and fair fair play to the club they really did look after me in terms of getting me top treatment and and um and I kind of just lost the love the love of playing um and I actually coached went because I tried to recuperate the whole year when when Robert Youngblood and uh, Dave Titmus were coaching so being around them too and and seeing it from the sidelines and and helping them where I could, so they gave me some tasks to do, and I quite enjoyed it. But it was it was the summer that summer after, where I coached the under thirteens boys Hertfordshire County team, and I loved every second of it. And um, I drove back from Essex, we we won, but forget that we won. It was that was obviously great for them, but for me it was it was really enjoyable. And I had magic on on full blast, as as we've already discussed, and singing singing on the way home. And I thought maybe I found what what I want to do. I had I had, I had a feeling like I've never had on a basketball court before. I I really enjoyed playing with my mates. That was always a lot of fun. Brunel was was good times, but um, yeah, it was a real it was a real kind of like all right, let's maybe let's change. And when I was younger, I used to really into football. I used to like make teams and on like spreadsheets and and make rugby teams and everything and and coaching gave me the opportunity to do that in real life. Um, so yeah, the it was a shame about the ankles. Um, and I stop stopping playing at twenty three. Sometimes make me think, ah, oh, maybe I I should regret because I was just I was just sort of getting going. Um, 
and I would love to have played on some of the Hemel teams we have now. Um, but yeah, it was time to sort of start the coaching career. I thought, do I want to carry on playing and and probably not get to a level I aspired to because I physically can't? Or well, let's start coaching a lot earlier than most people do, and I can get to that level from a different from a different angle, uh, maybe even higher because I I wasn't I was never going to be that good playing wise, but I'd like to think I could get there as a coach. Um, so yeah, it was a tough time, a lot of mental challenges lots of physical challenges but fair play to everyone around me they were really supportive and uh and yeah so here we are now I, I don't I don't really I don't have any regrets I have some thoughts but I don't I don't regret anything um there's I was very honored to be able to be asked that that well, I was 24 then to I was like can I be the assistant and they gave me that opportunity so I have a I, I have a lot of thanks towards the club for giving me that opportunity. Um, so yeah, fair play. One of, one of the other questions we got asked is, um, why do you think we we got beaten on Sunday? Was there anything specific that did it, or do you think it was just um, one of those games where it was close and it can go either way? The simple, the simple answer is Elijah Bailey was played very well. Um, and there was obviously a spectrum of response to this. Um, and as you go further down, it, it does become more complex. But I always had this thing last year, five pound. Yep, great. <laughs> if we can keep a team under 80 points, I think we'll win. Because Hemelstorm has always had the scoring power to be able to score more than 80 if we as a defensive unit can keep a team under 80, I think we're going to win. Um, and, and we didn't do a good enough job of staying out of rotation on the weekend. So what, what I mean by rotation is um this is this is the offensive this is the offensive player, this is a defender. Can this defender keep this guy in front of him as as much as possible? And then if he's beaten and someone else then has to help, you're then in rotation. So you're not keeping people in front of you. And far too often on the weekend, we were in rotation, which meant we were scrambling. Um, and the best form of defense is offense. And some of the shots that we would normally make didn't go in, which then gave them the opportunity to fast break on us. So they're probably the two things. Our shot selection at the time could have been a little bit better to then not give them as easy options because you're at your weakest when you're in defensive transition because the whole court is being used and everyone's spread out. You want to try and make it a half court game. So you're in the half court containing people, trying to keep them in front of you and not having everyone moving around. Um, so yeah, that that's probably the the two reasons. Um, yeah. That's an interesting answer actually, Mike, because that reminds me of something about the breakers game in that first quarter. I think they scored... 36 right which was again I, I kind of remember that mindset around like under 20 points a quarter or what have you yeah. but the second quarter was like seven points limited them to seven to go from 36 to seven was something obviously you know Mark and yourself yeah. came, came up with or how did that change oh, so it, much it, it was just me no um no. <laughs> <Fair> enough, <yeah. laughs> so it was um I'd something new that we're doing this year is we, we went to a zone. So you have man-to-man -man defense and you have zone defense. Um, so man-to-man -man is everyone is assigned to a certain person um, and we switch a lot. So any screens will switch, any off ball screens will switch. But then something else we have in the locker this year is, is a zone. Um, and I won't go into the details of it in case other coaches watch this. Um, <laughs> But, I doubt it, but fair. You, you're no, in the same no, no. mate. It'll be fine. <laughs> they, they, they might. I'll tell you the next time three of us, four of us together. Um, but yeah, the zone threw them a little bit because that's that's not not something they would have expected us to do. Um, and yeah, and and also, and uh, Mark again, hats off to his experience. I was like, I, I went in there and I went, Mark, like, we got to do this, this, and this. He went, Mike they are not going to shoot 55% from three consistently. Like they've done that in one quarter. They're not going to do it. And I was like, yeah, that's completely fair. 
to score 36 is rare. So they're not going to do it every... So everything we're doing is not necessarily wrong. They're just having a lot of success. And sometimes teams have that. Um, so, yeah, we changed it defensively. Mark was right with his experience. They won't shoot like that again. Fair, like, fair play to him on that one. Um, and, yeah, I think... I think Sam Newman made a good point on against Loughborough on the weekend. Why why are we letting ourselves get into holes? We seem to get into holes and then like, all right, let's sort this hole out rather than let's just not get into a hole this year. Do, do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Uh, like every game has been reasonably close and there's been moments where we've been in holes, whereas if we just stamp our authority a little bit earlier, we'd never be in that hole in the first place. Um, so, yeah. I need to stop saying oh. so, yeah at the end of my sentences. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah maybe that's the next one that Tom will charge you five pounds for yeah <laughs> or maybe we could we'll go back through it and just <laughs> oh no um was there any more questions that came out of the uh, yeah there was, asking... there was two more um I think you've kind of touched on one in a roundabout way already with authenticity and, and what we're speaking about but someone did ask if you had to adapt your way of coaching or had to do anything differently under new head coach than what you have done previously yeah so yeah touching it a little bit differently like mark wants different things to what drew does um and that's fine but i've still been myself in the way i sort of conduct myself in games um and try to be impactful in that way um yeah i'll never forget when I'll never forget when I was, it was off the, after the back of COVID, there was podcast clinic all over, all over the internet. You watched everyone and it, it was like, coaches should be this, coaches should be that. And I went to my, I went to a train session first one after COVID with the university, right boys, we're going to do this. And then, sorry, it was two weeks in. I did this, I coached the game. And then I thought, you know what, the next game I'm going to be, I'm not going to be me. I'm going to try and be what these guys are telling me. And this six six massive guy who was on my team pulled me by my top, and he said to me, "Mike, I won't use the exact words. He went, Mike, just be yourself. Like we don't need you. We need you to be the way you are." And from that moment on, I've always thought, "All right, just be yourself." Because if you're not being yourself, people can see right through you. Um, and I tried it again last year. He's done it again. For the third time. <laughs> um, so yeah, last question. Thanks for, for coming back, Mike. The last question we had was one that we were asked just as we hit record earlier, and it was from a young lady called Georgia asking when you're gonna do the washing up this evening. That's why the camera just went off. I quickly did it and then uh, I'm back in. I I <laughs> that is that, that's how long my contribution is to the washing up. What was it about five seconds? Um so yeah, no, she uh, she cooked a lovely curry, um, and yeah, I need to clean up all the mess she left of it, um, <laughs> all the burnt all the burnt equipment that was uh, it was used. So, <laughs> oh, sure, hopefully, sure. she can't hear you saying that, mate. Yeah, I'm going to shut the door probably. But um, there was one time, one time I was at work, and because uh, I do most of the cooking, which is not a problem, I was on touch. Like, I'll cook for you tonight. I'm like. Yeah, this is great. Like, can't wait. She was like, what do you want? I was like, sausage, mash and beans. That sounds fantastic. Um, so come home, come home. Oven's on. Like, yeah, it's a good start. And then she was like, oh, I didn't have time to do the mash and the beans, but the sausages are in. All right. So she gives me the mash. Uh, she gives me the potatoes. And um, so I come up, do it. Serve up the mash and the beans. Open the oven. She forgot to put the sausages in. <laughs> So that sums that sums up the the cooking ability. Um, <laughs> she did make a lovely curry, so yeah, hats off to her for that. So yeah, the, we had very cold mash and beans whilst the sausages <laughs> did cook. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, what, one last question. So last season we were asking all the guests what their favourite basketball film was. Um, if I remember right, Mike, you said Coach Carter. Have you seen any? basketball films or documentaries or anything like that over the last few months that you'd recommend for the, any of the listeners to watch? No, not not really. My, 
no, and this sounds a bit bad plugging this a little bit, but the biggest thing I, I'm watching is how accessible the British Basketball League is now. Like you can watch every single game on YouTube. Yeah. And and I, I know that's not really the answer you were looking for. I'm sorry, but I do spend a lot of my time just watching basketball because that's the best way to learn about it. Um, so anyone who is watching this, who's looking for a basketball fix, we're one of the few leagues, apart from the NBA, obviously, but we're one of the few leagues where you can see every single game on YouTube on a decent coverage. Um, very decent coverage, actually. Um, so, yeah, that's my, uh, what's the word? British basketball plug there. Um, and I think yeah, I have I'm... noticed that this season. I think I had a, one of Aaron's games on the iPad um on youtube and laura's like oh do you mind if i put the telly on i was like no because taylor's game's on the tv she's like <laughs> you can't watch both i was like no no i can't <laughs> so uh yeah that it's having access to every game is is brilliant yeah, and i think sky have picked up a contract for 40 games on sky sports this year as well yeah the annoying thing is about sky even though it's great don't get me wrong is it's on a thursday when we train um but it doesn't matter because you still get we still get all the youtube games um yeah, that would be my sort of uh, thing to say is it's it's so accessible and so so easy to watch a high standard of high standard of basketball, especially with some of the arenas that are being built built now. Sheffield and Caledonia, they've got their own venue, which is unbelievable. Huge, yeah, huge for the game. Like Leicester, Newcastle, London to an extent with a cough box. New um, Caledonia, Sheffield, Bristol are in the process. Although I think there was some news this evening that might be halted, but. More often than not, guys are owning the clubs are owning their venue, which can only help um, can only help grow the game. And they're not just they're not just random venues; they're state of the art. Um, so yes, yeah, so it's a very exciting time to be involved in British basketball, and I uh, I encourage all of those who 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 love watching the NBA to give the BBL a chance. Because yes, I know you're not going to see LeBron James and people like that, but the NBA had to start somewhere. The BBL starting from that point now, and and if we asked you who were the main contenders in the BBL, would you name every team in the league like you did on <laughs> on our one? Or... <laughs> no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. They are definitely it's London. Yeah, it's London. <laughs> it, London, London will probably win it. Caledonia. I was expecting to be a bit more. I was expecting to be a bit more political there and just say Cheshire and Plymouth, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, and Cheshire and Plymouth, yeah, sorry, yeah, um, but yeah, London, <laughs> just got a, London have got an absolutely ridiculous, ridiculous team. Um, but Manchester game a good, good game on the weekend, but um, it's just interesting to see if they can bar- um, balance their European commitments with their, with their um, British commitments. If they can successfully manage that, then I think they're on they're on course for another good year, but. As I talked about earlier, with us, us and Solent trying to get to that Solent bit, London have done this, and Caledonia, Leicester, Newcastle, Bristol—they're all going right. Well, that's what we need to do to compete now, which is only good for the league. Um, so yeah, exciting, very exciting time to be involved in British basketball. I think. Yeah, Rish, awesome. Lee, any more questions for Mike? Nothing else from me. I think you need to get to that washing up. Sorry, Mike, but um, <laughs> no, it's well, been I a feel again. Five... Really, really great, great time of chat, and uh, thanks for coming on. And you know, we'll see you at another game soon. No, no, more than more than happy to come on. And as I said, um, as I've said numerous times to you all individually and as a collective, thank you for all you do to help um, put support the club and push the club. Because without people like yourselves, we we wouldn't be in in the position that that we are in. So. Uh, yeah, thank you to the three of you. Thanks for coming on, Michael. Um, same time next year, I guess, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah. we'll try and go with the four different schedules, appointments again. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, and we're going to remember that you just name every team when you when we say who's who's the main contenders as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can't yeah. go wrong then, can you? <laughs> Someone's going to win. Not the people I said, so... No. Um, it's been brilliant having you on. Um, thanks for coming on, Mike. Yeah. No Cheers, worries. Mike. Thank Happy you, mate. To help.